Hey guys, how are we get on today? So today we're here with um, Jennifer O'Malan, and Jennifer is a counsellor and a psychotherapist. So it's um, it's a pleasure to have you with us today, um, sharing your knowledge, sharing a little bit about what you do and a bit about your background. So, um, so yeah, I suppose just to kind of start off, can you explain what um, counselling is and what psychotherapy is? So counselling is so suitable for people who want to work on an issue over a short period of time and it's often something that's presenting in their life right now that they're, they're struggling with. It could be a redundancy or they're going through a, a separation so it's something right now yeah. that, that they want to work through um, and it's normally short term. Uh, psychotherapy on the other hand is deeper work so it tends to go back to your childhood yeah. and even um, in the womb so yeah. you can go oh, right wow. back yeah you can go right back with the client yeah. so it's something from their past that's um i suppose preventing them from living a fully functioning yeah. life now as an adult um and they're aware of this yeah so they need help unpacking that yeah. and working through that and um, to resolve uh, to resolve the issue and to um, help them heal yeah um, so that they'll be happier within themselves. Okay, cool. So I suppose it's good to to try and be able to figure out those things that are holding them back as early as possible, really. Because I know, like I know for myself, going through a lot of different things, especially my teenage years and stuff, that they held me back right up until today, and I still have things that I'm working on. Yeah. So, like, do you think it's people should be trying to start to be aware about what may be triggering things or what may be holding them back? So. They can start to, to work on them as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, because we all have, uh, you know, um, growing edges, yeah. our black spots that we're not aware of. And working with a therapist um, helps you become aware of these black spots. The places we don't go yeah. um, are the parts of ourselves that we don't like. So um, this then enables clients to connect with themselves as a whole person and and get to know themselves um fully okay um and i suppose then with ease to, to move forward and, and to progress in life and um, but also working with a therapist uh, around around issues it gives them resources so that when they leave the therapy room that they can go out there and in their daily lives they they know how to what tools to use yeah let's say if they become anxious or if they feel stressed yeah and um, they know what to do for themselves so it's all about resourcing the client and, and building them up and um, that they have the confidence to know what to do yeah yeah um, and sometimes with psychotherapy you could work with the client for one two three years and they might come back and and just you know check in every yeah. now and then yeah, yeah. Um, so it uh, it can be a long lasting yeah. relationship um which is very fulfilling for for me as yeah, a yeah yeah so it shows obviously shows that they trust you then as well well yeah. the trust is huge yeah. and i would say to clients when they come at the start to meet me um it's very it's a very uncomfortable setting yeah. at the start because they're with a complete stranger um so i acknowledge that i acknowledge this probably feels really strange and you don't know me um and i just said this is really normal and this was how I would have felt when I went to see my counsellor firstly. Yeah. Um, it's really strange and you feel so vulnerable because you're so exposed. Yeah. Um, and I think what really unsettles people as well, it's so silent, you know, and it's 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 a very quiet space. Yeah. You're really with yourself. So that's all very normal. Um but as you get to know the therapist, you become more trusting. Yeah. And you become you feel safe with them um, they, 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 they very much listen yeah and um, it's a non-judgmental space and it's confidential yeah. so anything that's discussed in the room stays in the room yeah. um, and after a first session clients would often say god I feel a relief you know just yeah. even saying that out loud or having somebody to listen and not comment or not try to fix it you know that that just feels really good yeah. and more than all more more likely I don't think I've ever had a client who hasn't come back. Yeah. But they'll, they'll come back the second time and then we continue to work together. 
So there is a lot about you have to, um, you do go out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, but that's about that's all that's that's growth. Yeah. That's how you grow. Exactly. It's all about growth. If you're not, if you're not stepping outside your comfort zone, then you're you're not growing. You're not and growing. It's, it's that no. fear of the unknown as well, stepping out there. Yeah, and fear comes into the room very much so, because when we're um, when we're frightened or we feel um, stressed. You know, we will, um, our protectors, yeah. you know, come right in there and they guard us. So um, in therapy, it's it's very much the therapist is helping the client to gradually, you know, drop the guard. And, yeah. um, you know, in their own time, it's, it's a process. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a gradual process. Yeah, no, and I like what you say about that as well, that it is a safe place and it is, it is confidential. Yeah. So when people are stepping into this place, that they... They can open up. They don't have to have any fears behind that. So I know when I went through counselling before, um, when I think it was about 18, 19, but um, I had that fear initially even going in the door. And I don't think it really did anything for me because I was afraid to let my guard down. Mm. I was afraid to actually open up and share how I was feeling and stuff like that. But, um, but I just never really understood what it was, what it's all about, how the process works. Mm. Like you said, it was stepping into this quiet room and I'm like mm-hmm. what's going on here yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of freaking out but would, would you mind kind of taking a step back and just kind of I suppose sharing a little bit about your own personal journey back say when you were a teenager mm. and what kind of led you to doing what you do today yeah um so I suppose for me teenage years were tough and um, tough for a number of reasons uh school wise um, there was exams, there was pressure to um, to do well in exams. Um, my own pressure, but I also would have felt pressure from, from parents because there was talk about college and what I could do. Um, but at home, there was conflict, I suppose, within our home. And my parents went through a separation. So that was very difficult um, for me um, as the eldest person in, 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 in the house. Um, and I needed to reach out to somebody else to talk to because I needed to vent. Um, I needed somebody to hold me. Yeah. Um, and I needed to, to, to be sad. I needed to, to cry. Um, and that was when I was put in contact with, um, uh, I suppose, the first counsellor. Yeah. Um, and talking to her, I did feel a sense of relief. And I felt, I felt, okay, well, at least somebody else knows now. I'm not holding all of this on my own shoulders. Um, so sharing helped a lot. Yeah. Um, what I did notice, I suppose, looking back now, my patterns as a teenager going out with my friends and going to discos, I love to have fun. What I, I did tend to drink, um, a little bit too much and I think that was all part of my my process and how I numbed yeah in how I numbed the pain because I, I couldn't talk to them about what was going on so there was a there was a, there was an element of shame and um keeping that private yeah um so as a family we were introduced to family therapy and that's what sparked my interest in okay in the counselling world and how they can help people um, and that's when I decided, didn't know at the time, but yeah. oh yeah, I, I quite like to work in that area yeah. and here I am. Okay, so, so obviously you felt there was great benefit from getting counselling yourself and... Hugely, yeah. yeah, hugely. I think getting external help really um, benefited me because yeah. um, there was no judgement. There was nobody trying to fix me yeah. um, it just was a space for me to talk for me to feel and um, because when there's a lot going on around you i uh, tended to numb yeah. my feelings um, and that's not healthy so talking to somebody helped you know they i suppose they they helped um me access that yeah and release yeah, and I, like, I can relate to that a lot because like my parents split up as well and it put me in a really bad place. Yeah. And I was just saying that you're just partying really hard just to yeah. just to make yourself feel better. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's it's a really common thing now for for parents to be splitting up themselves. Yeah. Um, so like when and there's obviously going to be a lot of people watching this as well that their parents would have split up. But how can they know that they may be going through a case of depression or anxiety? What what kind of things should they be kind of looking out for? How do you think they would be feeling? Okay. Because I know for me, like, I was end up going through having panic attacks, everything, and I didn't have a clue what was going on. Mm -hmm. So what kind of stuff do you think people should be looking out for? Mm. Well, firstly, I'd say anxiety is a very normal feeling, and we need it because it protects us. So whenever we're facing danger, or we feel threatened, or we, we're, we're feeling stressed, our, our body will immediately um, get armed. And our stress responses are fight, flight, or freeze. So we yeah. do one of the three. So the amygdala in our brain gets ready, and that's what, um, that's what kicks starts our stress response. Um, so a little bit about the context, I think, is helpful for people to know. Um, whenever we are in a state of um, where we're feeling anxious, it's referred. It, it's called hyperarousal. So we're in a hyperaroused state. Um, so we could suffer from panic attacks, um, we could feel very anxious, our body and our muscles are very tight, our body is rigid and armed. Yeah. Um, when life throws something at us, we don't know what to do. And we don't know we don't know how to manage it when we're um, when we're anxious. But when we're in a calm state, we, we know we're resourced, we can manage it. And um, whenever we feel so low and so sad and so stuck that we're we, we feel depressed, we feel suicidal. Um People would refer to it as a, a black hole where we're just sinking. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do we know if we're anxious? So our body tells us. So we um, will feel our breathing will be fast um, and our heart will be racing. Um, our muscles in our body will be tense. We might have a dry mouth. Um, our tummy, we could have butterflies in our tummy or that nervous, um, that nervous feeling. You might feel like you need to vomit um, and we're, we, we could feel very sweaty okay um, so these are all physical symptoms that we're anxious yeah um, depression yeah on the other hand so when we feel depressed so we could feel um, hopeless um, we might constantly feel angry I'd be in a, in a state of agitation um, we might feel overwhelmed and uh, nothing seems fun anymore even things that we loved uh, we're very demotivated and um, we feel bad about ourselves so um, we're very negative uh, mindset um, we might feel very guilty and um, often we are sleep is affected either we're sleeping too much or we're not sleeping enough um, our weight can be affected in that we put on weight or we lose weight, but it's all unconscious. It, it wasn't anything that we planned to do. Yeah. Um, we might turn to alcohol, we might turn to drugs, we might turn to sex. Um, and these are all ways of numbing, numbing the pain or numbing the feeling. Um, cry more. Um, and we could have suicidal thoughts or we might self-harm. Um, also, physically, we might have physical pain in our body. So these are all, again, physical symptoms of of depression.